and welcome back. I'm excited today to start off the very first Tuesday challenge that's going on in the Nonstop Paper Crafts Facebook group. My new Facebook group, which I'm very excited, already has over 100 members. If you are not part of the Facebook group but would like to join, I will have that link down below. Do please come and join us. As I say, that's where I'm going to be posting the event uh, for this Tuesday challenge. I set myself the goal that every week on a Tuesday, it's now been decided, I will be altering an index card because as you can see, I've got quite a lot of index cards. Um, I've got some white ones, I've got some different coloured ones and they do come in a variety of different colours. I've got some smaller ones and then I've got these which are the uh, same size, four by six, but these are just white card. So I've decided to use the lined ones just in case I do want to use, do some journaling on the back. Um, but I may incorporate these in there somehow. I'm just going to move the spare ones out of the way. So for this challenge, as I said, I'm going to be using these index cards. So they are four by six inches, um, which is a kind of like a standard photo size. And then to kind of help decide how I'm going to alter them, I came up with some different prompts. Now I have three envelopes uh, and I have also printed the prompts out in a list just so I can kind of tick them off as I go. Um, and I've got three sets of prompts. So I will have a set of colours, things and words. And then what I'm going to do is each week I will pull one out and they will be the kind of prompts uh, to help decorate and alter that index card. Now for the words and the things, I was able to think up 52 of those to last the 52 weeks of the year. Uh, with the colours, I didn't go with 52 colours. I've gone with 26 colours and then all I'll do is I'll just pop them back in and then repeat them uh, twice throughout the year. So they're my different envelopes. Now to save some time and because my five-year-old was also super excited and wanted to pick them out, she has chosen the three prompts already for this week. So the three prompts, the first one, the colour is dark blue. So that's what she's picked out. The word is sweet. Now, as I explained in a previous video, there are two ways that you can use this. So sweet could either be a word that you add onto the index card or it could be the theme. So things that perhaps are sweet or you find sweet could be the theme of your index card. And then the thing, so something you might add to it, I have the word scraps. So this is perfect for using up some scraps on this particular card. So as I said, because my daughter's already um, picked them out, I have had some time to kind of have a think about this and think about what I'm going to do for the first one. Now, when I first saw the word sweet, my mind immediately goes to food. It doesn't have to. It could be a sweet person in your life. Um, but mine immediately went to food and then I remembered that I still have items left over from the Your Creative Studio box that was gifted to me. So I have some different elements that I thought I might try and use. So I've got a couple of vellum pages and I'll put it on this background just so you can kind of see them. So we've got one that has lots of cakes on, so that's the sweet element. We've also got this sweet young girl holding again some food um, these were pages that came in the pack and these are actually sticker sheets so I thought again um, I might be able to do some sort of collaging and use those on one of the index cards um, and then I've also got um, in my little tubs some of the stickers that I'm sure came with the Your Creative Studio so you've got all different bits here I think most of it's breads but there are some cakes there as well so I thought I might be able to perhaps use some of those. Um, there are also some like washi tapes type stickers. Uh, so we've got a nice, looks a bit like a trifle actually, because it looks like there's fruit and jelly in there. So kind of like a trifle. Again, you've got cakes and biscuits and those kind of things. So again, I've got lots of washi st stickers and things in here. And as I said, I'm sure these are all from the Your Creative Studio box. So I've got those to play around with. I've also got some mini pages, which I don't think came from the Your Creative Studio because it's a mix of all sorts of different things. But 
the first one on top I noticed did have a tomato on so it does have some um, different food bits in when I kind of flicked through so I thought this might be an option if there are some more food pieces it may have just been that top one that was tomatoes oh no look there's cake oh uh well we've got bread bread's not really i mean it can be sweet but i was thinking i was thinking cakes and biscuits that's immediately what came to mind unfortunately food was the first thing when i saw the word sweet um but as i said you can interpret it anyway it could be a picture of a little puppy dog anything really that you think is quite sweet so you could even use this image because you've got those cute little girls there as I said, I think I'm going to go with the food theme. So I'm just quickly checking if there were any others. Okay. Oh, and we've got another biscuit one. So we'll use those. Okay. So, yeah. So I've got those little mini pages. Again, they could all be part of the collage. Um, and then I also have um, a little tub that has die cuts, which I've coloured. So these are stamps and uh, dies so I think that one was for um, a kind of get well things you've got a bowl of soup could potentially use soup but then I've also got again little sort of sweets cakes and biscuits that I thought be, might be quite good to use as well so what I'm going to do is maybe start with the background so the sweet element I think is easy that's going to definitely be food scraps I have kind of pulled out already because I know the color is dark blue so I did start to pull out some of my scraps and most of them are blues some of them are a dark blue so again I did try to prepare a little bit I've even cut out the word sweet with dark blue lettering like I said you don't have to have the name on there I may not still add sweet on there um, I haven't decided yet uh, but then yeah I have all of these scraps so some of them are dark blue some of them are not but then I thought then it's a nice contrast again if we're going to do a bit of collaging um, I've got some very fine strips here of dark blue and then as you can see just some sort of scraps where I've obviously die cut some bits out but they were different kinds of uh, blue that I could use so there's my scraps we'll see how we can incorporate those in a moment I did also pull out a little paper doily because again I'm thinking food doilies that might go and then just because we all love to use up some book pages I thought I'd pull out that as well. Now I do also have that I um, purchased from a D-Stash group um, is this Nouveau Mousse um, and it's kind of like a shimmery blue. Now I know it's not dark blue but again it kind of contrasts nicely if I do use these dark blue elements but I was thinking of maybe adding some shimmer and dimension uh, with that because I've not used it yet. So it'll be fun to sort of play around with that as well. So as I said in my previous video, I think the reason that I kind of want to set up this challenge is one, because I had tons of index cards. Uh, two, I'm hoping that it's going to keep me consistent. I want to be able to release this video, as I said, every Tuesday um, and be consistent with my craft as well. But most importantly, I think it's just using up my stash. I do have a lot of things, but I seem to just be collecting, collecting, collecting and not actually using. So that is my aim for this year is to actually start using some of those things um, in my stash. So I'm going to zoom you in a little bit and let's start creating the first card. Right, OK, so I'm going to move all of these out of the way because obviously we don't need all of those cards. And we've got this one. So there are our prompts. So I'm just going to move those to the side as well because we don't need those in the way. So this is what we've got. And these index cards aren't particularly thin. Um, sorry, aren't particularly thick. Then they're quite thin. But that's why I was thinking when I start sort of like layering up and collaging, uh, then it won't be too bad. So I am going to just kind of tear down this a little bit because I might use that up in the corners. Um, I do really want to use this. I love that little cake down the side. So I think I am going to use a little bit of the cake. And we'll see how easy this is to tear, because don't forget this is sticker paper. So 
I'm just going to sort of tear along the top of that. I'm thinking that can go in the corner. We could maybe have, or even pop that under there, some of the text. Um, or maybe we don't have the text there because we want to try and not have such a straight line. So if we have that up there, then we're going to need that all the way down there. Okay, so something like that, which means we need some other bits. So I think maybe having that up at the top. So that's going to slot under there. Then we're kind of having that there. Then we can maybe have the doily as well. Kind of up in that corner, something like that. And then obviously we've got some scraps that we can use so we can have some of those in there. We've got our pictures as well. So I think I'm going to start by sticking those bits down. So obviously these are sticker paper. I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to come up. Oh, that was quite easy. That was nice. Ah! Well, they're nice and sticky. Oh man, making a right hash of this, aren't I? Let's try and get it at least reasonably straight. There we go. It doesn't matter if it overlaps any because I will trim around the edge um, afterwards. So I'm just going to stick this one to the bottom. But what I'm going to do is just to create a little bit of a contrast, I am going to ink. And because this is a kind of vintage style, I am going to use my vintage photo. And again, I don't need to go all the way around the edge because I can do that afterwards. But yeah, that just creates a little bit of a definition between the two. So let's peel that one off. That one went down a little bit easier. Awesome, so we've got that. And then it was going to be this, wasn't it? So I'm just going to use a glue stick for that. Right, let's see. Kind of around here. Awesome. Um, and then we've got this doily, which I was thinking we could perhaps have on there. I'm just going to have a look because I've got these letters sweeped. Oops. Not sure how big they are, how much space they take up once they're all laid out. Well, not too bad. They would actually fit on the doily, wouldn't they? Where's the edge of that card? About there. Okay, so I want my doily about there then. Okay, so I'm just going to lift this up. Again, I'm going to use that there. around there okay 
Okay, so before I do anything else, I'm just going to trim those bits off. Okay, so more scraps to use possibly in a moment. Okay, so we've got those. I am just going to lightly go over that doily with my ink dauber. Just like that. And I do need to just apply a little bit of glue just along this bottom edge. just to stop that from catching. Right, okay. Now we've got those. Um, I could now add these. Okay, so just to help, I'm going to use my tweezers. I'm just gonna kind of lay it out first. So we've got sweet. Now I'm just thinking actually before I add those, I obviously have this uh, nouveau mousse. Now I wanted kind of like a um, picnicy type effect. Now the only thing I've got is this. That's the closest that I've got. So I'm thinking of adding some of this. Now it's not going to be sort of straight on but I'm just thinking over the writing a little bit because the writing is not a recipe or anything or anything to do with cooking so I'm thinking if we just slightly kind of cover that a little bit and obviously start coming into the other areas as well. So I'm going to put that at an angle like that and I'm just going to grab a spatula as well and as you can see this is new I haven't tried it yet. Okay so I'm just going to bring in my mixed media mat just so that while this mat is dirty, this is much easier to just kind of remove and clean. Okay, so that's how it's looking, very mousse-like, and it is a kind of moussey texture as well. Now I did watch a couple of videos on people using this and it looked really, really good. So hopefully this will be quite fun to use. So I'm just going to hold that in place. Okay, well as I said, not used this before. It goes down quite nicely actually. How it looks when I pull up the stencil though is a whole different question. Right, that'll do. Let's pull it up and see. Oh, it looks pretty. Okay, I like that. Right, I'm just going to pop that on there, scrape off the excess back into there. Okay, then I'm going to remove the mat. I'll wash that up shortly. All I'm going to do is just give that a little bit of a blast with my heat gun um, and hopefully that will help drive it a lot quicker. Right, okay, well I hope that you can kind of see the shimmer on there. I think it looks very, very pretty. Um, okay, so now I think I will add my letters. 
Yeah, we're just going to line them up where I want them. Using my belly art glue, just going to stick these down. So I think I'll start with the E in the middle. I do realise it doesn't have to be exact and I may not actually stick them down exactly but I always like to start with the middle one because then it gives me an idea of the spacing I need for the other letters. But I'm not going to do them exactly in line. Oops. These are quite nice little die cut letters actually because they um, have little stitching in them which I know you might not be able to see on the camera because um, obviously it's quite a dark colour. I'll bring it up see if you can see but there are like teeny little dots of stitching just up the centre of the letters. A really nice die set actually. Not that I can remember exactly where I got it from. If I remember, I will try and link it down below. Quite possibly Amazon. I do buy a lot from Amazon. Okay. So there's my word sweet. Now we just need to think about the other elements. So what did we need? Scraps, sweet and dark blue. Well I've got the dark blue in the sweet but I do want to add some dark blue as well. So I don't know whether to along where we've got these lines to just have a couple of strips. Again, they don't have to be the same sort of length or anything. I don't know. Got that as a possibility. Obviously, I've got all these nice sweet bits as well. So we've got the bourbon. What else have we got? Cherry Bakewell. Now, I'm tempted by the Cherry Bakewell because I've recently been on a little weekend away to Bakewell, which was very nice. So we've got those. And my little blue sweet. We could have that. Um, already got doily. I don't know. Do I just kind of leave it? Maybe just with some sweets because we've got our dark blue, we've got our scraps. We've kind of used leftovers. I did use scraps to punch out the letters. I've got my leftovers from the Your Creative Studio box. I mean, I know they weren't technically scraps because it was a full sheet, but like I said, it was leftovers. Um, then sweet is both written and I've got sweet things. So, yeah, I don't know. I think I might do a little bit of stamping. I feel like there's something missing in this corner. So I'm just going to go and pull out my stamps. Okay, so I do actually have this recipe card uh, stamp and I'm just thinking even if I just kind of ink up that top bit and try and get that in there that might be quite cute and it does come with a die set that's why it's on the back okay so 
it's not my largest stamping block but I just need that section really don't I at the top okay so I've got a smaller ink pad just because it's easier to just get then the section that I want because I just want this bit here And I am going to, again, using a scrap, just going to stamp it off first. And then put it on here. Yeah, okay. Might have to do that again, but this time not stamp off. I didn't want it too dark, that's all. That's why I thought I'd stamp off first, but it hasn't picked it up at all. So we'll do that again. Okay, that's better. And then I do like the ingredients list, so I am going to add the ingredients down the side. And include some of those lines. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, so get rid of that. So, yeah, I think I'm going to add these, but I might bring in my good old friend Cheesecloth. And maybe put some cheesecloth behind them. Just going to keep fiddling with your arrangement until I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so I've got a little bit of cheesecloth. I do like to add cheesecloth. Those of you that have been watching a while will know that. So, yeah, I think I quite like that arrangement. I don't want to cover up too much obviously of this because I do really like that so I'm thinking maybe have those together and then have some cheesecloth underneath as well. So I'm just going to try and glue these together as a cluster. literally just lifting up every now and then popping it back down the nice thing about this glue is it does dry quite quickly okay and then we'll do that one in a minute so let's pop down some cheesecloth Then we can start adding our elements again. So a nice bake oil tart up at the top. I'm just going to hold that down for a moment. And we've got this cluster of biscuits which is going to go there.
Okay, so I think that looks pretty cute. So we have sweet, absolutely. We've got it in the word and we've got it actually on here. So we've got our pancakes here. We've got our biscuits, sweets and cakes over here. Dark blue we've used. I've got dark blue in the lettering. I do keep coming back to these strips and wondering if I could maybe do something with them. I don't know. Anyway, dark blue, sweet, done. Scraps also we've done because I've used scraps to obviously create the collage. I've used scraps to punch out my wording as well. Um, so yeah, we've ticked off those boxes. The only other thing that I want to do is obviously again I'm going to have 52 of these. So I was trying to think of how I wanted to incorporate that. Did I want to have a number on there? And then I thought, well, I've got this tab. So this would actually be pretty good. I could have tabs at the top of my index cards and then I should be able to flip through one to what will be 52 by the time they are finished and then I can use them either as um, just somewhere to journal or use them for something else but yeah that's what I was thinking of doing uh, to number them so I'm just going to maybe again use my scraps let's see what we've got that would be far too flimsy using that. Again, this has got my dark blue on, hasn't it? So that would tick that box again. So maybe. Oh, all that. Oh, I've got stripes. Stripes might look better, mightn't they? So yeah, I think I'm going to do my stripes then. Because I was thinking of using those stripes, but I can use these ones. And I've got dark blue and scraps again ticked off. So I'm just going to very quickly die cut that one. Okay, so that's my die cut tab. Now I do really like the bird size. The only reason I can't use the bird side is because it's directional and it would annoy me that something's upside down. Um, yeah if you fold it over I've got these birds upside down so it's going to have to go the other way and again I've still got my dark blue stripes I can also pop my number on there so that's going to get stuck onto here so I think I'm just going to put it inside the R of the recipe or do I lower it down? I might lower it down actually to that line. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of an ink around. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is literally just ink around that edge. Okay, doesn't matter too much on this side, but I think I will give it a little bit of an ink. And you can, of course, collage the back as well. I'm not going to. As I said, I'm undecided whether I want to use it for um, a journaling space. I think I'll decide maybe towards the end. It might be that I spend this year making all of these journaling cards 
and then next year I do some kind of project where I have to do a bit of journaling once a week then I've already got my 52 cards for once a week haven't I so that's my first card then so I really hope that you like this and that you want to join in so just a reminder the prompts for this week are dark blue sweet and scraps so this was my interpretation of the challenge so I've got my sweet element I've got my cakes and my pancakes and biscuits and things um dark blue I've used some dark blue in here and scraps I've used some of my scraps and leftovers um, from various different things thank you very much for joining me for Tuesday challenge number one and I can't wait to see you in the next crafty video bye for now